the complete history of the Nuzlocke. I was told that I make a little cameo on this and I asked Wolfie if it's okay to react and he said, yeah, absolutely go for it. I'm excited to watch. So I don't know what he did in this video, but I feel like I can bring a unique perspective to this because I've been doing Nuzlocke's full time on YouTube for about 10 years. So I would say I am average at them. Let's if go. If you played every single Pokemon game, but somehow had never been on the internet, you would have no idea what a Nuzlocke is. Despite being one of the most popular ways of playing Pokemon, you start with Coconut Mall. Nuzlocke's aren't mentioned anywhere in the games themselves. Despite this, Nuzlocke's are so popular that they've even been adapted to- God, I see there's some of my favorite YouTubes on that! ...other non-Pokemon games, even though they were specifically designed for Pokemon. If you're watching this video, you probably already know what a Nuzlocke is. In fact, you've probably watched one or two of them. If you don't already know, don't sweat it. I'll be explaining in a second. I love the editing that Wolfie puts into this. I guess it's the editor. I don't know if he directs the editing in any way, but it's so unique and special to his channel. I, it's absolutely Nuzlocke wonderful. What's funny is most people don't know where they come from or even why they're called Nuzlocke's in the first place. Even some of oh, the creators who stream them don't know. So I- They don't know. They weren't the original OGs. They didn't see the original web comics back in the I day. I myself to take a deep dive into the furthest, grimiest corners of the internet to find out where Nuzlocke's came from and how we got to where we are now. This is the complete history of the Nuzlocke. Oh, I love timeline videos. This is gonna be so fun. And since I actually know a lot about this, I, I feel like I'm gonna have so much to say. Before this is gonna be great. Before we the video, Oof. I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Baiyi. Living Bye. in America, you might think you can buy whatever you want, whenever you want. Unfortunately, that's you can't. Just not the case. There are tons of Japanese businesses that don't ship internationally. And who I hate that. Oh, I hate that so much. Normally outrageous. Well, fret Come no on, longer. Nintendo, sold Thanks out. Baiyi, you can buy anything from Japan. This anything? Products found on websites like Rakuten, Amazon Japan, and no Yahoo way. Japan Auction. Buy Yahoo? Or bid on the item on your behalf. Have it sent to a warehouse in Japan and then yeah. ship it to you themselves. Whoa, that's Bayi so fast. has over a hundred shipping methods, dozens of payment that's methods, so many. and four insurance plans to meet your needs. They also four insurance plans? In several languages. God, I only need one insurance plan, but knowing they have the option of four is incredible. I have to watch this entire ad because it's rude if it I skip is, it. Including English, so you know exactly what you're buying. Sign up today yes. using the link in the description and you'll get 2,000 yen off your first purchase on Baiyi. All right, Wolfie, I suppose I'll, I'll sign up. I'll open that link. I'll get that set up for later. Thanks for letting me As know, mate. I'm recording this video. This converts to around 15 US dollars. That's a lot of money right that. there. Thanks again. You know you could get a Chinese meal, a succulent Chinese meal for $15. Throughout history, there have been many instances of players bypassing a game's intended gameplay in favor of something more challenging. Beating the original Doom was already a challenge in itself, but it only took five hours. With the ability to post recordings of your gameplay online, gamers started competing- Wow, we're going right back to the beginning. The fastest, which in turn led to speedrunning. There's only so many times you can play one game before getting- Speedrunning Doom looks so smooth and slick. The movement in that game, there's something about it. It's really weird. Obviously it wouldn't feel good now to play because we have all these modern advancements like the sprint button and stuff like that. But speedrunning, it looks it. so smooth. Pokemon faced this exact same problem going into the early 2000s. Each new installment was pretty much just red and blue with a fresh coat of paint. And this has pretty much been the case ever since. For the players who started with Gen 1, they've pretty much mastered the gameplay at this point. They've seen everything there is to be seen. The series became too repetitive, easy, and dull. There was no more challenge. There <laughs> Wait, no more he put the BDSP in the background. Oh, you're bad for that. That's mean. <laughs> And that's exactly how Nick Franco felt in 2010 before- Bro, that- wait, what did- that's- that's the- the state. author of the Nuzlocke? That's what? Exactly how Damn, he's kind of a Chad. Look at him, he's got the full facial hair, he's got like the windswept hair, he's got the strong brows. How Nick he's Franco kind of a Chad. Felt in 2010 before he created the Nuzlocke. Bored of his college classes, Nick decided to start a new save file on his old Ruby cartridge. But after realizing that beating Ruby would be just as boring as studying for finals, Nick decided Facts. to set two rules for himself. One, he could only catch the first new Pokemon he encountered in each differently named area, and two, 
If a Pokemon fainted, he would have to release it. I love that people still to this day come into comment sections and say, you didn't do this rule? It's not a real Nuzlocke. You have to do this. You have to do this rule. You can't use legendaries in a Nuzlocke. You can't use healing items in a Nuzlocke. You can't do this. You can't do that. You have to use set battle style. Everyone thinks that there's insane amount of official rules. That's it. Th those are the rules. If you, if you do this, it's a Nuzlocke. I hate those gatekeepers. You're being annoying. Shut up. All right, stop it. And thus, the first Nuzlocke ever began. Nick quickly realized that this style of You can't cheat in a Nuzlocke? Well, that's fine. I've never cheated in a Nuzlocke. ...play resulted in a closer bond between him and his Pokemon. A bond like he'd never experienced. Pokemon he used to ignore were now key members of his team, giving him a newfound appreciation of them whenever they came in clutch. If they you've ever played a Nuzlocke, you know this feeling all too well. I could do Swampert this turn. Oh my god, my heart. You'll also know how heartbreaking it is seeing one of them faint. <laughs> no, Swampert! No! Throughout his run, start, gone. Nick thought that it would be fun to share his experience with others. So he did what any sane person would, create a 14 page webcomic detailing his playthrough. This was a problematic era for internet humor, so I don't recommend reading the original webcomic. For those of you that may be offended by anything, uh, you probably should. Instead, I'll sum it up for you while showing the panels that aren't gonna make YouTube or Pikachu mad at me. Nick picked Trico as his starter and caught a Seedot and Zigzagoon shortly after. Now, he didn't feel great about these encounters, but with due time, he grew to appreciate them. Seedot would evolve into the Nuzleaf, which gives the Nuzlocke challenge half of its name, and then die on the same page. No. The name Nuzlocke is derived from these two panels, in which Nuzli's face is replaced by the character John Locke from the TV show Lost. That probably sounds very strange now, but- What a crazy way to have an insanely popular game mode that was internet made. You, know, that, you can't do that, man, without the internet. The internet is such a weird and strange place. You can't have stuff like this happen. If it was media manufactured or a game mode that was inserted by Game Freak or by Nintendo, it wouldn't be having anything like that. It wouldn't have the, the heart and soul of John Locke. Lost was one of the biggest <laughs> From shows Lost. in the early 2000s. Also, this was right around the time where memes were even becoming a thing, so the bar for being considered hilarious was a lot lower. So, of course, oh, fans yeah. of the webcomic decided to name the entire challenge after it. Catching a Silcoon that quickly evolved into Beautifly, Nick was about to be faced with his first obstacle, a tale as old as time. Oh no. Overworld Poison. Rushing to the Pokemon uh -oh. Center, he held onto hope that his Pokemon would be able to survive. But Nick's suffering was only just beginning. Bro, that stream alert came in exactly when the Beautifly died. That's so... No, you're bad for that. Oh my god. <laughs> Beautifly, Zigzagoon, Loudred, <laughs> Pelipper, Medicham, Camerupt, Hariyama, Walrein, and Septile were all met with similar fates. They were Jesus gone. Christ. Forever. It's not very good at the game, is he? Nick did demonstrate some great strategies that are still used in Nuzlocke today. For example, playing around Slaking's true on ability with Protect. Going hyper offensive. Damn, he created the original strat. Them. Using Parish Song against Steven's Metagross. These techniques allowed him to complete his run, become the champion, and change Pokemon forever. It was God, and that was just the beginning. Originally, it was a lot of web comics, and it didn't really hit YouTube until a while later. But man, all the way back in 2005, was it 2005? Like 2010? It's, it's a long, such a long time readers ago. readers started posting their own Nuzlocke comics online. The earliest one that I could find was posted to the Nuzlocke forum oh, yeah, 2010. on December 20th of 2010. Shiro's Trial, a Nuzlocke adventure in Kanto spends a- Do people still do this? Because I feel like we've also gotten used to the video format of Nuzlocke's that having an actual drawn artistic webcomic is- It's gone to miss. We miss those. It's like a manga, right? I guess- in the same way you could say Jaden's videos are a little bit like that. It's a fusion of webcomic and video with some gameplay in as well. So maybe that's the, the new hybrid form that is more powerful than you could possibly imagine. The whopping 43 chapters. And frankly, the art is quite impressive, especially when compared to Franco's. Shiro's That's so story cool. Is interesting. Hey, whoa! <laughs> no need to dunk on Franco like that. He was the originator, okay? I mean, the arts may have led a little bit to be desired, but it's like the One Punch Man manga. Like, it's not that good art wise, but it's because still fun. Instead of just retelling the events and adding personality to each character, she goes full headcanon. She even goes so far as to skip over or change major events, such as how she beat Blue's final Pokemon in the champion battle. Instead of simply O-coing Charizard with Graveler, Shiro opts for a more interesting story beat, having Blue forfeit after realizing his Pokemon were controlled by Mewtwo. Mewtwo what? goes on to become the final <laughs> on, instead, hence leading to the name Shiro's Trial. 
they were controlled by Mewtwo. Wow, that's cool. You know what? That's a, actually a really good way for artists to get experience in creating their own stories. Then you can use that as like an application, as a as a preview, as a this is what I can do type beat. Instead of just using the original story, you can show that off your artistic skills, but also your story writing skills as well. So that's good for us. Well Nuzlocke forums also had a section for written blogs. The first one of these I found was a hard gold Nuzlocke posted on January 5th, 2011. I have never and seen it sure these. Is something. From what I can tell, the Nuzlocker did manage to beat Red on Mount Silver. I'm not sure. <laughs> From what I can tell, you can't even read it because the way the forums were set up back then, God, I used to use these forums so much when I was younger in 2010, 2011. The way that the forums were set up, a web developer would vomit and projectile vomit and then throw themselves out a window if they saw those nowadays. In fact, some of them are still up that I used to use frequently and I used to, I always went back to them and they're so goddamn ugly and unreadable. Exactly how they did it, but hey. But I now Reddit's it. taken over. What this era perfectly encapsulated was the emotional connection that Nuzlockers form with their Pokemon, a feeling that wouldn't be the same for years to come. Before the days of speed up, rare candy, and super optimization, Nuzlocks would take days, if not months, to beat. Okay, I have an admission to come to here. I have been doing Nuzlocks for about 10 years and I've been using rare candies for about 10 years because I didn't like grinding and I didn't think it was part of the video because whenever I would record a video, you'd have to grind off screen. People would be like, oh, I'm gonna go grind off screen. And I was like, that's boring. I don't like doing that. I don't have the patience to sit down and grind. So I just use rare candies and I've always done that. And back in the day, it used to be so taboo. Like Nowadays, you can use rare candies. No one cares because everyone collectively understands that grinding is cringe and cheating is based. But back in the day, if you were caught using rare candies, oh, you were going to get the brigade on you. The, the Spanish Inquisition would be called and nobody expects them. Dozens of hours spent leveling up a Pokemon only to lose them to a dumb mistake meant so much more back then than it does nowadays. That's why from this era, losing a Pokemon was often met with depictions of heavy sorrow. Real quick, if you're enjoying the video, I hope you'll consider subscribing. We are already did, so Wolf. close to a million subscribers, and we subscribe, just need Wolfie. a little bit more help to get this final push. Even Look at this. Look at this. I'm subscribed. Already, I'd appreciate you taking a second to double check, because a lot of people who watch the video check that they're subscribed, but they actually aren't. Anyway, back to the video. Now, let's jump forward a few months Don't worry, to June you. 2011. Twitch has just launched, and gaming channels on YouTube are rising in popularity. In fact, the earliest Nuzlocke video I could find on YouTube is from this year. It's a 30-second animated clip from the user's webcomic. Wow. Today, it's nearly Damn. impossible to find Nuzlocke. 2011 was the first Nuzlocke video? That's when I created this YouTube channel, 2011. Content from this era by using YouTube's search engine. But by using Google and filtering by date, you'll find does- Wait, what the fu- Wait, whoa, whoa, wait. Can you spot what's wrong here? Hold on. So he, he went to January 2011 to January 2013. Why? It says Pokemon randomizer, M and J TV. But the picture, that, that's a picture of me. <laughs> Why? That's a picture of me when I was recording, I think, Ultra Sun and Moon. Why am I M and J TV? How did this happen? What? I remember that. That's when I used to w live in my old flat in 2018. Am I M and J TV? Greetings, Poke fans. Michael here. <laughs> Is that me? People <laughs> linking to their own series. The is that the cameo? People told me I have a cameo in this video. Is that it? Is that, is that my cameo? The series I found was Hayden's oh, Diamond Run from December. Oh, dude. I used to love Hayden's videos so much. Like he was original. He was one of the originators. I'm so glad that Hayden's still around to this day because he was one of the Poketubers that I looked up to the most when I was younger. And when I started poking, posting Pokemon videos, I went to people for inspiration. And I went to people like Hayden and Shofu and went to Maryland and Super Skarmory and Leroy because they always did the things that I thought that I could do and that I wanted to do. And I'm so, I'm so glad that Hayden's still around, man. 2011, and it is 52 episodes long. Incredibly, Damn. Hayden is still making great Pokemon content today. Nuzlocke yes, series he is. like this one laid the groundwork for how we watch Nuzlocke today. Viewers were able to see what happened in real time, as opposed to being told what happened after the fact. This way of showcasing Nuzlocke brought the audience and the player closer than ever before. Encountering the area's best Pokemon, witnessing the death of a valuable team member, no! nearly wiping to the hardest battle in the game. <laughs> we made it! Viewers were now- God, when I started posting Nuzlocke videos back in the day, I can't, I can't even remember, it was so long ago. I think it was like 20, it must've been 2012 that I started posting Nuzlocke videos. Wow, 11 I'm years ago. To experience a similar feeling of emotion as the player. As Nuzlocke rose in popularity, people wanted to find ways of making their Nuzlocke 
stand out. The first domino in the chain that would eventually lead to the myriad of Nuzlocke variants we have today was the universal Pokemon game randomizer. This was the first thing I ever used to randomize my Pokemon game. Oh my God, it's such a throwback, this man. This tool swapped every Pokemon in the game with a random one. I actually think it was a program that wasn't the universal randomizer, but it was kind of like a pre predecessor to it. It was a program that would randomize your game, but it would do it in different ways. Like I had an Emerald randomization that would show one Pokemon as the starter, play the cry of a different one, but then actually be a completely different one, which the universal Pokemon randomizer doesn't do. It's a completely different program. Leading to hilarious and very chaotic playthroughs. Groudon. But I mean, oh. <laughs> Your starter Pokemon could be Groudon, or it could be Weedle. Yeah, Randomizer was the first thing that I ever did. My first ever Nuzlocke I posted on YouTube. It was Pokemon Fire the same Red, is true I think. of opposing trainers in the game. Wait, does that mean my rival gets. Oh, why did I do that? No! You would never know what you're going up against, <laughs> making planning totally irrelevant. A few other creators you might know also start. Hey, this is my friends! Look, there's Dan and Luke! Oh my God! Wow, what a throwback! Jeez, eight, nine, nine years ago! Wow. Own Nuzlocke series around this time, but Patters would be the first to attempt one with the randomizer tool. It's me. Pokemon Fire Red Randomizer Nuzlocke Part One. Oh, bad that's a start. That's a bad and a video. Bad start it was. Types yeah. like oh. uh, the Bulbasaur one will still be gr uh, grass oh, type. Oh God! Like yeah, that's me. That's what I've experienced so far. Let's have a look what we got here. Oh, oh God. Making it to the starter selection <laughs> screen, Patters realizes that he hasn't even turned the randomizer on. You don't have to, After that's okay. You don't have to show that, Pog. That's fine. Starter, it's a little Patters embarrassing. Only loses the first rival battle. Okay, that's good. That's good. You don't have to- the first Pokemon. All right, that's, that's kind of embarrassing. in the process. Yeah, I, okay, that's later, good. Patters finally makes it to the champion battle Yay. and revives one of his Pokemon. So it's gonna be three against six, which I still think is, he's, they're up. The odds are in his I favor. I cheated! I, Why did she, you didn't have to put that in, Wolfie? <laughs> oh my god. I um, <laughs> <that> was, no. <laughs> um, guys, listen, listen. It, that was, that was different. There's a different, oh god, okay. Um, so, hey, hey guys, it's my, it's me, uh, Daniel. Um, I'm here to apologize for my transgressions 11 years ago. I did, I, I did a terrible thing. I, I, I cheated. I, I, I cheated. <laughs> Sorry. I just want to make that clear that uh, that wasn't me. That was someone else. That was another guy. Uh, someone stole my, stole my controller and did that. It was my dog at the time. Actually, it was Clara hacked onto my PC and installed cheating Max Revives. I, uh, it wasn't someone. It was someone else. I think this is funny because it just encapsulates how different this era was. Nowadays, yep. doing something like this would be kind of unthinkable, but back in the day, <laughs> it was kind of the Wild West. With let's. Oh my god. He did all this research. I didn't even know he was going to put that in the video. I just got exposed in front of everyone. Oh, I can't believe that. I'm going to have to rethink my life now. Everyone's going to think I'm a cheater now. What's all that about? Not... I will defend myself slightly here. This was 2012. It, like he said, it was the Wild West of Nuzlocke's, and people didn't really, you know, did go for did, They didn't care about the rules all that much. Like, people might complain a little bit, but I had never done a Nuzlocke before. I wasn't in the Pokemon community. I uploaded Bioshock Infinite videos and Fallout 3 DLC walkthroughs. And then I decided one day I'll do a Pokemon series because I like Pokemon, maybe it'll do well. And I got to the end and I was like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm not gonna be able to win if I just have two Pokemon, so I were used a Max Revive. I only used it on one, so I had three Pokemon against the champion. It was still a really good fight, but I knew that I couldn't win without it. Anyway, uh, I'll, I will never do it again. I promise, I'll never do that again. Now, starting from now, garbage, starting now. Of course you'd expect, but some of them went on to be mainstays in the Nuzlocking community. Even some of the garbage ones, namely Pokemon Dark Rising. Oh my god, he just called out Dark Rising. Let's hear what he says about Dark Rising first, because I've got a lot to say about Dark Rising. Made ROM hack made by a modder named Dark Rising Girl in 2012. This game might have the cringy dialogue, countless typos, edgy story, and poorly designed fake mon that plague these early ROMs, but what matters is that it was incredibly hard to Nuzlocke. Random trainers jumping out at you, completely revamped base stats and abilities, and poorly coded, well, everything. These are the ingredients that make Dark Rising so formidable. People would raise their Pokemon 20 to 30 levels higher than their opponents and still end up losing. In 2013, Shady, Shady. Pokemon's run would only last seven episodes before he got swept by a random trainer in a cave. We <laughs> 
Bro, we're all catching strays in this right now. Me, Shady, and the Dark Rising girl. Yeah, I was the first person, I think, to successfully Nuzlocke Dark Rising. It took me 39 parts. And when did I finish this? It must have been like a long time ago. I finished this in 20, 2015, and it came out in 2012. I think I was the first person that ever completed Dark Rising as a Nuzlocke. And bro, it was not easy at all. This Shadow Lugia, I think had 800 base stat toll, which at the time was unheard of. Now it's not even that special, but at the time it was like ridiculous. And it took me so long to beat that game. It was ridiculous. You know that Nuzlocke's were created to increase the difficulty for veteran players, but what happens when even those become- No, I didn't use a max of The answer is probably obvious. Make harder Nuzlocke's. Introducing the Nuzlocke variant. Egglock, Wedlock, Randomizer, Wonderlock, Cage Lock, Soul Link, Gift Lock, Sleep Lock, Zombie Lock. Oh, lol, yo, I got another cameo. Let's go. <laughs> My face is in there. Okay, I'm obviously not going to name every single one. There's like a hundred of these. And the reason why... Th There's the Shady Lock, the Lock Lock, the Key Lock, the Trouser Lock. There's so many of these is that all you need is one new rule to distinguish it from a regular Nuzlocke. Seriously, you could come up with your very own Nuzlocke right now. How about no Pokemon? do it all the time, like the Lud Lock or the Shady Lock. Shady Penguin was one of the first Pokemon YouTubers to do a Nuzlocke variant in this style and to name it after himself. Shady began uploading the very first Shady Lock back in February of 2014. Let's go, Shady! Aside from the basic Nuzlocke rules, Shady added an extra one that he would only be able to heal via potions that he would hack into the game. What's so bad? That's actually super, super crazy difficult. Uh, that, you might be wondering. Well, potions don't restore your power points. Once a move ran out of PP, he would never be able to use it again, which basically took away his ability to grind for levels. Oh, also, this challenge was a randomizer. As you can imagine, it didn't go very well. Shady's first run, though, started off pretty strong. He got a grand bull- Callum, what did you mean by that? Can you explain? Go into further detail here? What's, uh, what's all that about? With Intimidate as his starter. He then caught a Vigoroth and a War Turtle, and most surprisingly, figured out that Tail Whip was actually one of the most valuable moves any of his Pokemon could learn. If you lowered your opponent's defense stat enough, you could basically one-shot it, which is- I'll DM you? That's okay, you don't have to. Really <laughs> useful when you're trying to conserve PP. Things were looking good until he remembered what lay ahead. Nugget, Nugget Bridge. Bridge. The gauntlet of trainers guaranteed to drain every last move that he had. This is an early example of something that still happens today when a Nuzlocke is too difficult. Shady updated his rules. After defeating a gym, Shady would be granted one token that he could use to heal his Pokemon at a Pokemon Center. In a Dude, saying this in a retrospective format is so interesting because I remember when this started, I remember when it came out, I remember watching it when it came out, I remember talking to Shady when this Paul, came out. Like Shady's viewers <sighs> accepted this new rule and the run- Bro, he, he brought, he got up the straw poll. The, okay, I just want to say, the research done on this video is absolutely insane. It's ridiculous. I don't want to even for a second underplay the amount of research, time, and effort that went into this video to explain a, a, a Pokemon rule set, a, a custom Pokemon rule set. This is crazy. There's been hours upon hours upon hours of research, gathering data, gathering screenshots, gathering everything that you need for this, and then editing it together and writing a script. This is crazy. Uncontinued. JD took his Grand Bowl all the way to the Elite Four, where he was met with a new challenge. He was out of tokens, his Alakazam was basically useless, and uh -oh. his entire team was under level. Wait, 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 that's very. Right. <laughs> yeah! Another cameo. Let's go, baby. Oh, we did it again, boys, girls, and MVs. We did it again. Another bloody cameo spelled wrong. Let's go. Spelled my name incorrectly. He made it through a single battle, but then wiped to Bruno. Shady didn't give up there, though. A year later, he'd try again with Leaf Green and succeed. He moved on to Heart Gold after that and wiped. And then a year after that, he beat Platinum. As more Let's and go. more Nuzlocke variants came out, a streamer called Excessively Ave came up with the brilliant idea of completing a gauntlet of every single mainline Pokemon game with a different set of rules applied to each Nuzlocke. He called Ooh, it the Nuzlocke. That sounds a lot. In 2016, Pokemon saw a huge spike in popularity, in part thanks to Pokemon Go. To capitalize on all the traffic coming through their channels, MNJTV, TrueGreen7, PokeAimMD, and Shofu all posted their own Nuzlocke. If we went into detail on all these, we'd be here all day. So instead, let's talk about the other most important thing that happened in 2016. The birth of the hardcore Nuzlocke. 
Oh, here Andrew it comes. Yon. I really hope that Wolfie at some point during this video talks about Chaotic Meatballs, Nuzlocke series. Chaotic Meatball has been doing a Nuzlocke series in every single game where he does a hardcore Nuzlocke on every game, right? With the caveat being, if he uses a Pokemon in one game, he cannot use it in any of the other games. And he's been doing this massive, super long series about it. And I think that is one of the best ideas, or at least the hardest to do ideas in a long, long, long time. That this is really cool. He's doing like three games per video and continually it's just one really long story about struggling to find Pokemon to catch and use, which Pokemon to catch and use. I hope he talks about this because it's really interesting. On, who you might know as Pokemon Challenges, the self-titled greatest Nuzlocker in the world. Yawn began streaming. Oh, okay. I think he says probably. Pull down a little bit. I think he says probably. Oh, dude, this layout. Oh, no, Yawn. This layout, mate. What is going on, on here? Twitch this year, with the goal of combining Pokemon challenges with the hardcore gaming culture often found around games like Dota 2 or League of Legends. To do this, he'd add in additional rules to make his Nuzlocks more challenging, such as not allowing items to be used in battle, and capping the level of his Pokemon to match the strongest Pokemon of the next gym leader. He first implemented these rules in a ROM hack called Pokemon Storm Silver, made by Dryano, who would go on to create some of the most popular ROM hacks to date. We love Dryano. Dryano's ROM hacks were known for their variety of encounters and buffs to Pokemon that are otherwise very weak. This made for a more- Sorry, did you say something? I. I I blacked out for a second there. <laughs> wow, it must have been the um, must have been the music. Interesting and replayable run through. Pair that with an overall harder game and a streamer willing to punish himself whenever he lost, and you've got a gaming channel ready to blow up. Okay, it took a couple years, but in the meantime, Yon and his small, tight-knit community were becoming extremely passionate about hardcore Nuzlocke. I remember when Yon was, um, well, I, I guess not not as big as he was now. It was it was back in the day. I was I, I thought I like I looked at his channel. I was like, man, like dedicating everything to really really hard Nuzlocke challenges. That must be so stressful all the time. I really respect that. And I think I I met him at TwitchCon in 2018 in uh, Germany before the whole reaction meta took off and you know everyone started to blow up from that and uh, he's, he's really nice. Understanding that his personality and skill were enough, Yon dropped the punishment gimmick and instead focused on becoming the best Nuzlocker. After beating the Dryon- Becoming the best of something is a surefire way to blow up in a certain category. Being the best Nuzlocker, that's Yon's thing. When you think of the best Nuzlocker in the world, he has branded himself so well on that. And guess who else has branded them really well on being the best at something? It's, it's Mr. Wolfie VGC right here. The world champ difference, right? The world champ diff. That branded, so important, Final so games. memorable. 2018 saw Yon take on the heart. Which is why I today, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm electing to call myself uh, Daniel, the, the best uh, <clears throat> uh, reactor in the world. <laughs> oh no, it's not a good title. <laughs> hardest ROM hacks to date. The Kaizo Trilogy, created by programmer Sinister Hooded Figure. Right off the bat, Blue Kaizo was proving to be a nightmare. There were exploding Pokemon everywhere. Oh, can we live that? Easily. Overworld puzzles took forever to solve. Brock's ace was an Aerodactyl for crying out loud. That's insane. And he's the first gym leader. Yon determined that an itemless Nuzlocke would be impossible, something that he still stands by to this day. Even after allowing himself to spam potions. potions. I can't win otherwise. I need to spam potions here. That's the only way I win. And he lost. <laughs> God. Oh dear. It would still take three months and over 49 attempts to finally beat this game. Let's go! Half Let's go. Year of this Level 115, by the way. Mmm. Dude, these Kaizo games are ridiculous. Both 49 attempts. Crystal Kaizo was the same story. <laughs> he thought 49 attempts was a lot. Oh, he wasn't aware. Does he know? He lacks the critical information that he requires. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh no. Except Yon knew what to expect this time. With immense planning and a boatload of potions, he completed it in just 10 attempts. Nice. Oh my god, this <laughs> Oh no. That's so unfortunate. He had the biggest moment of the entire run covered up by a subscription notification. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's that's unfortunate. Oof. Oh my Volume god! Volume lowers. I never want to play this f***ing game again. Emerald. Uh, so he started playing that game again, and he's playing it right now, I think. Kaizo, on the other hand. This is it, boys. Oh boy. 151. Just explode, you piece of sh Please! It's over. We lost. Uh... I can't imagine 
a moment more defeating in terms of Pokemon Nuzlocking than this. 77 attempts in with about 5,000 live viewers in front of him. Everybody praying for him to succeed and it just didn't go his way. That's so sad. I mean, nothing could prepare him for that. That'd be so sad. Oh so man, it'd be so sad. But before we get into Jan's 2019 attempt at Emerald Kaizo, we first have to talk about something else that happened in 2019. Something that would change everything. Not just Dogs. for Jan, but the Nuzlocking Cats, fuck, and Pokemon communities at large. This is the year we got the Jaden video. Clock oh, here we go! We're, we're starting to speed up now, boys and girls. Uh, yeah, we're, we're diving right into the depth yeah. of it. Just under 18 minutes, Jaden Animations broke the internet with an incredibly animated story time detailing her very first Nuzlocke. From admitting that she always thought this kid was a monkey to going into two of the hardest matches under leveled. Okay. 42? Uh-oh, I was even more underleveled for Maxi. It doesn't go down? Jaden perfectly blended humor and tension to keep every viewer engaged. She even threw in clips from her actual playthrough to prove that it all really happened. Oh my gosh, that does a lot of damage. It's stop! Stop! But what really showcased Jaden's storytelling prowess were the handful of setups and payoffs throughout the story. For instance, a bit about her Torchic accidentally knocking out two Zigzagoons on early routes. Dude! Teriyaki kills another Zigzagoon I was about to catch. What the I already reacted to this video. I can't, I can't react for again. To then KO her Nuzleaf later on. And the worst happened. Wait, no, 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 no. Stop, 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 Jaden confesses that this death was actually due to a misclick, which I'm sure is something we can all relate to. Uh, it weakens fighting damage, which. Do you misclick? Uh, and that's a one shot item. Oh, no, Wolfie. That is now heat pad. Oh, Wolfie. Getting, uh, attack, but also oh, no, against Ray Rizzo. Misclicking against Ray Rizzo, one of the greatest Pokemon players of all time. Oh man! Oh, that feels so bad. I think Ray Rizzo was like a six-time world champion. There's even a setup that didn't get paid off until Yawn reacted to Jaden's video shortly after. Apparently, KOing a bunch of Meryl to level up her Magneton gave Magneton just enough HP EVs to survive an earthquake from Winona's Altaria on two HP. A moment Jaden thought was simply a blessing from the RNG gods. After a few more lucky breaks, that Jayden is so cool. That is straight up like an anime um, moment right there. Finish your Nuzlocke with only two Pokemon left, and the rest is history. What a way to come full circle too, from a poorly drawn webcomic to a masterfully executed animation. Jaden tapped into what started the Nuzlocke sensation in the first place, sharing the experience through quick and digestible anecdotes. It also helped that Jaden's video is really funny. Nuzlocke's usually put you in uh, humorous situations. Okay. Horse. Ah! I pray that I don't get crit and I don't die to poison. Come on, no crit. Crit me, it crit me. Please survive. Ah! No! <sighs> oh no! But Jaden's writing, animation, and storytelling really enhance these moments further. That's not to say that watching a Nuzlocke performed in real time is somehow worse, though. In fact, there's a whole lot of people who prefer to watch them live compared to after the fact. The authenticity, yeah! the stakes, the I was there moments. Delicious. It's a whole different experience. I had the I was there moment with the end of Hoochery of Pokemon. I was there. I was literally there when the original Witch Plays Pokemon, Pokemon Blue Run, was finished. I watched it live. It was like 10 in the morning. The it was way great. That Nick Franco and Jaden shared their Nuzlocks might be what caused Nuzlocking to take off, but the real lifeblood of the scene are the people streaming their Nuzlocks on Twitch or YouTube right now. People like Facts. watching high level players strategizing and executing extremely high level plays. People also like watching average players execute average level plays, like me when I play Radical Red. To be clear, I'm not saying that it's worse to do a post com, highly narrated, high effort video. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of people really like that, which is part of the reason why, as of the time I'm recording this, Jaden's video sits at 84 million views. Those views not do bad. not include the countless PokeTuber reaction videos, so yeah. Oh, look, there I am! I'll make another cameo! Okay, is it is it cringe of me to say that I, I think I, I, I kind of started this? I think I started the whole PokeTuber reacts meta because I did the first reaction to Jaden's Nuzlocke video. I kind of knew it was a success because the day that I uploaded it, the day after, I would always check the analytics on videos and I uploaded that and it had 26,000 views the next day. And this is coming from a YouTuber that usually when they upload a video gets like maybe 2,000 views 
3,000 views the day after. And I saw that and I was at PAX East and I looked at that and I was like, oh my God. And that was the turning point because I think a lot of YouTubers saw that reaction videos did really well. And I did the first PokerTuber reacts and then they kind of was like, okay, let's, let's, you and can twist this. <laughs> it's weird to say that I'm like, oh, I think I kind of started this mare because all it is is reacting to a video. It's not special. They're taking someone else's video, you know, taking someone else's hard work and making a reaction video to it. But it turns out people really liked it a lot. And I think that's probably the most impact I've had on the Pokemon community was kickstarting the react meta. And that made a lot of people angry. A lot of people didn't like it. But the main thing is the people that created the videos we're totally cool with it. I remember the next day, Jaden commented on that video and she said that she really liked, liked the reaction. I was like, cool, that's that's awesome. I, I'm really happy about that. And since then, I have met Jaden in real life and hung out and I've met so many people and made so many connections and made so many friends because of the fact that doing a reaction is somewhat of a collaboration, a little bit. And if people like it and people enjoy it, then you can make connections that way. And I think that that's great. It's entirely possible that this one video has been watched uh, over a hundred million times. With oh yeah, easily, video blowing definitely. Up, everybody wanted a piece of the Nuz locking cake, but not everybody had the incredible animation skills and narration abilities that Jaden had. Of course, you don't need to be an incredible animator to be able to play a Nuzlocke or to make it entertaining, especially considering there are tons of games that you can Nuzlocke and new challenge rules being added regularly. This because many. there was suddenly such a high demand for Nuzlocke content, new PokeTubers began popping up immediately. One creator in particular, Purple Cliff, actually did Purple Cliff. Really interesting. Dude, he definitely deserves a mention. Purple Cliff popped off and he was like the main person that popped off on TikTok. He used TikTok chef's kiss spectacularly so many people were looking at tiktok and the amount of views that they were getting and they were like oh god i don't know what to do with this i don't know what to do with this how do i how do i use this and people would post like clips of live streams but people wouldn't really look at it seriously and i remember Pebble cliff was a little bit he, he, not annoyed but he, he was frustrated that people wouldn't look at tiktok in the same way that they would look at youtube but there was so much potential there and he was honestly so correct because he used it in such a way that it blasted his profile into the stratosphere. It's really, really good. Pulling off a viral Nuzlocke series on TikTok. What's more, YouTubers from across the platform who didn't do Pokemon as their main niche also had a lot of success doing Nuzlocke challenges. Alpharad, Ludwig, and Small Ant all made really great Pokemon Nuzlocke videos, despite the fact that they do a bunch of different game content. Ah, oh, dude, there's so much you can say about this as well. When other people from other communities come into Pokemon and they bring their perspective that they brought from their other community, like Small Ant from Mario speedrunning, Alpharad from doing funny man things all the time and just making generally great videos, or Ludwig from the stream meta that is just kind of do whatever you want and think of funny ways to add stakes to series. You could make a video on like just these people on how they changed things and how they did things really well because of the different perspective that they brought in as well. Alpha, Alpha did a lot of Smash Bros, but he's been just doing insane stuff for years. Like you could say like he's a Smash guy, but I feel like that's not being fair to him because he's, he's done a lot of Smash stuff. I mean, he made a, made a lot of Smash videos, but he's made so many good videos from just other things. He, he did like a Disneyland video that was one of my favorite videos of last year because he went to Disneyland and did all the rides in 24 hours. He's, he's been doing great stuff for, for a long time. last but not least, this era saw the rise of the pro Nuzlocker. Leading the pack is none other than Yawn, who saw a humongous spike in viewership following a reaction to Jaden's viral video. This is probably a good time to say that I did not do a lot of the research for this video myself, and I'd like to thank Yawn and DRXX, aka Drew, for their help putting together this video and making sure that everything was accurate. For creators who play exclusively hardcore Nuzlocke, a lot of times the base game of Pokemon is just way too easy. Because Baby that, boring game. In order to really have any meaningful challenge, they have to play ROM hacks, the most famous of which is Emerald Kaizo. We talked about Blue and Crystal Kaizo earlier, but Emerald Kaizo is special. First, it was a lot more accessible thanks to the quality of life updates that just came along with Gen 3 in general. It was Do you think the Emerald Kaizo is bigger than Radical Red? I guess it is, yeah. I mean, I would say that Emerald Kaizo is probably bigger than Radical Red just because of Yon, Also, the be hardest of the trilogy. Also, it doesn't hurt that Emerald is a fan favorite Pokemon game. The first person to attempt hardcore nuzlocking Emerald Kaizo would be a streamer named Luop Mail, who at the time was one of Yon's mods. Luop Mail had been a part of Yon's community for about two years, pushing him to optimize his gameplay and think more strategically. The two even met up in real life during GamesCon in 2018, and Theory crafted Blue Kaizo Elite Four Team 
Yon claims he never would have beaten the first two Kaizo games without Luop Mail's encouragement. So you know they're the real deal. I like how it says probably next to the text, even though he did some of the research for this video. Despite Yon's reputation for being the biggest hardcore Nuzlocke streamer, he couldn't start Emerald Kaizo right away because he needed to finish his college thesis. While Yon worked on his thesis, Luop Mail would stream himself playing Emerald Kaizo to the small community at the time. The problem was he couldn't finish it. After more than a hundred attempts, starting to believe that it was unbeatable. Others joined in, and before long, many of Yon's viewers were becoming the setting is so themselves, good. trying to beat this extremely difficult game. With all the attention on his reaction video and the growing demand for Nuzlocke content, Yon put his degree on hold and started to pursue streaming full time. His return brought even more attention to Emerald Kaizo and kickstarted a race to see who would be the first player to beat it in a hardcore Nuzlocke. The thing is, Luop Mail was right. Just like the previous Kaizo games, the only way Emerald Kaizo was going to be beatable was if they established a new rule. Because Roxanne and Brawly are so difficult in the game, and they're both early on that you have really limited encounters, you're basically always forced to pick Trico, and if you don't hit certain encounters, you basically have to reset. This was considered to be way too difficult and made the early game pretty much just dumb luck, so the level caps for each of these gym leaders were raised by one. This might not sound nice. like a huge deal, but it allows you to bring your starters evolution. Oh yeah, no, I was gonna say, that you get the start evolutions for that, that's absolutely, it, that changes everything. It'll make it so much the easier. First battle and Gyarados, which is a guaranteed encounter to the second, so it didn't make them easy, but it made them at least possible. After that, Yon spent several months developing a metagame with his community that would allow him to get further than this anyone editing. had before. <laughs> New records were being set all the time. First Yon, then Runon Bun, and finally Decapod. But none of these Nuzlockers would be the first to beat the hardcore Emerald Kaizo Nuzlocke. That title goes to a streamer called John underscore 97 on oh, I know this guy. 7th, 2021. This is a guy who doesn't speak on stream, I Others think. Others would shortly follow suit, including me. He communicates with his chat by typing in the chat. I've, it's very hmm. interesting. That's right. I am one of a very small group. Imagine quitting your thesis for Pokemon. Listen, I almost dropped out of university so I could just be a YouTuber instead. <laughs> That's I did that. Hardcore Nuzlocke Emerald Kaizo. I actually beat most of this game twice. I made it all the way to Steven on an earlier run, but I lost after experiencing some of the worst RNG I ever have in my entire life on the fight. Wolfie is insane. He just, look, run number nine. He made it all the way this far. Run number nine. Obviously, when you have things like documentation that's been created by people that came before you, it makes it a little bit easier. But listen, I, I, I wouldn't be able to get that far in nine runs. I, I don't have the game sense for that. Prior, which cost me most of my team. Not to be deterred, I returned to the game and successfully beat it as a hardcore Nuzlocke, which is, funnily enough, only the second Nuzlocke I've ever completed after base Emerald. Look at that! It's, he did one Emerald Nuzlocke and was like, yeah, let's just do, like, the hardest one. Let's just go right to the, to the very end, shall we? That's like running a race in preschool and then being like, actually, I want to race Usain Bolt now, please. So I'm pretty qualified to explain why this game is so fun and what makes it so difficult at the same time. Part of what makes Emerald Kaizo fun is, is how balanced the Pokemon are. Pokemon traditionally considered weak were both buffed and on the whole given to you earlier on in the game, which makes them actually really valuable. Trimeco, for example, is one of the best early encounters you can get, but it's not as good as Sunkern, who and you win. Yeah, and you win. to be extremely weak, is one of the best early game encounters you can get in Emerald Kaizo. If you're wondering why, it's because Sunkern is one of the only Pokemon of the game to get access to a move that can raise its stats during battle, being growth, and that's especially valuable in this game as the first three gyms are all more or less weak to Sunflora if you do a, a proper setup. That's insane that some floors. I actually love that. I love that they took like a completely trash, irrelevant mon and made it really good. Also, didn't they ban rain, hail, all the weather moves it's as well? They're all, the they're all no weather. The Pokemon are better though. There's so many encounters in each area, making replayability really high, which is great because if you're nuzlocking this game, you're probably going to be playing it a lot. Now, the game removes EVs for both your Pokemon and your opponent. Thank God. Which is great because. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I can play any games that don't remove EVs at this point. If they put in EVs, and it's it's just so much easier to play when you have a minimal grinding mode where you just automatically have 31 IVs and everyone has zero EVs. So much more enjoyable to play that way. Grinding is just not fun, especially in a game like Pokemon, but it does still give the opponent's team perfect IVs and a beneficial nature most of the time, whereas your Pokemon are stuck with whatever they get randomly. Oh, I didn't know that Emerald Kaizo didn't give you perfect IVs. 
That's interesting. I did not know that. So it's still a little bit RNG. In Radical Red, you have perfect IVs and they have perfect IVs too. That your Pokemon are still going to be at a disadvantage inherently against the opponents. Every trainer in the game has been rehauled and fights are significantly more difficult. I myself wiped once or twice on the very first trainer in the game, a bug catcher. The first gym leader has a full a strong bug catcher though. Pokemon, each of them holding an you should have seen that bug catcher. He had a gun and a sword and a katana and another sword for some reason. I don't know what he was doing with three swords. He said something about three sword style and he said that he liked one piece. It was I really know. weird. And it only gets harder from there. The general rule of Emerald Kaizo is that the opponent's tools are going to be better than yours at pretty much every step of the game. When you're using unevolved Pokemon, they're using evolved Pokemon. And when you're using evolved Pokemon, they're using legendaries. On top of that, the held items they use are just across the board better than anything you get until maybe the end game, but even still, it's not really a fair comparison. Also, the creator set up several areas of the game to be especially difficult and then removed the counterplay that you would normally have. The most difficult of these areas are Flannery's Gym and the Magma Hideout. They don't the give you weather moves. Permanently be harsh sunlight. That's you might so think you mean. can just overwrite this with Rain Dance or Hail or Sandstorm, but the creator removed all of these moves and Sunny Day from the game, so there's no <laughs> way to sunny turn day. Off the sun. Switching in against powerful, sun-boosted fire-type attacks is already really difficult, even if you resist them, but to make matters worse, the creator gave almost all fire types in these areas the attack Solar Beam. That means that the water and rock types that you'd normally use to resist fire also are not safe in this scenario. The final nail in the coffin as to I remember doing this fight. I was so anxious during it. I've only done one run of Emerald Kaizo and I got up to just past the, did I get past the fourth gym? But it was such what a nightmare. What makes so difficult is that while most of the time the AI will choose the move that is strongest or that it thinks is the strongest in a given scenario, Solar Beam has a chance of being called randomly. So even if you happen to have a faster water or rock type Pokemon that you can switch in otherwise safely against a fire type attack, the game could still randomly choose Solar Beam a lot of the time, resulting in an unnecessary chaos. It That's so weird that they do that. They program the AI to just sometimes randomly select Solar Beam just, just to put the nail in the coffin, just to sprinkle a little bit more salt on the wound and then spit on the wound and put acid in the wound and also put moldy river water in the wound. In Magma Hideout, the harder of these two areas, Whee! many Pokemon have variance inducing items like Quick Claw and Bright Powder, which makes it even more difficult to get through safely. In my first run, I lost my Salamence, who normally comes to the Elite Four, against a critical hit Heat Wave, followed by a Bright Powder miss. It's 11 out of 16 I survive. Uh, that sucks. Wait, that was still run number nine, right? You still made it to the Elite Four though, right? Into situations like this one, where Ancient Power boosts back to back, almost resulting in a reset. Please don't boost on me. Let's go! Boosting all the stats, baby. Let's go. Yeah. It's one of the most brutal sections of the entire game, and you're almost always going to have to sacrifice some Pokemon to make it through. Okay, do not boost again. Oh god, if it gets the double boost, it's over. Don't boost. Let's go! <laughs> the difficulty only- on the bright side, every time that he said it's over, he didn't lose, so that's good. ramping up. By the end of the game, the fights are just absurd. The first maxi fight before the fourth gym, so not even halfway through the game, has Registeel. Winona has all three legendary birds. Maxi 2 and has Entei. Archie has Raikou and Suicune, and a section of with permanent rain. Tate and Liza, one of the most difficult gym leaders from the base game, Deoxys? uses Latios, Latios, and oh, of course. Hirachi. In case you're wondering, Why not? no, you cannot get any legendary Pokemon Pokemon in this game, not even Rayquaza, unless you get super lucky with the Regis, but that's not before the Elite Four anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant. Speaking of the Elite Four, it is brutal. You need to plan your jo entire path through every single member, turn for turn, if you even want to have a chance of winning the game. If I, I almost won. Oh no, I think that just getting to the Elite Four in Emerald Kaizo is a massive, huge, raging, massive, chubby One victory. If goes wrong at any point, your entire run can be over then and there. Yeah. Oh, that's so nasty. Yeah, that's it. That yeah, feels so bad. In the end, it feels really bad. When I finally did beat Emerald Kaizo, I needed to develop an incredibly deep understanding of the AI so that I could plan out all five fights before I even stepped foot in for every single turn for every single battle with backup strats in case things went awry. I knew exactly which turns I was vulnerable to a crit, freeze, or any other randomness. And I had to limit those turns as much as possible to maximize my odds of winning. In order to win this, you need to turn this game from a video game that you like playing to 
a scientific thesis. Good, 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 good. I mean, the freeze is bad, but the, the no crit is good. Even with such a detailed plan, I knew that it was not guaranteed that freeze I would is make bad. it through. My first attempt is proof of that, where I also had a detailed plan, but Salamence had its own plan. Okay, I should live this. Uh-oh, it's crit time. Don't crit. You, here we go, it's and bye-bye. Oh, that's bad RNG. That sucks. 4% chance. Kaizo was so popular that Nuzlockers developed a number of written resources in order to help players get through it. You can find dozens of spreadsheets, documents, and calculators like these online. This includes hundreds of pages detailing every encounter, every trainer battle, and the best strategies for the more difficult fights in the game, just to make the game seem more doable. The most famous- You could write your master's degree on Emerald the Kaizo. The to beat Emerald Kaizo is, of course, Yon, who finished his run a week before I finished mine. I remember watching this run live on a train, and it was so exciting. Yon, like myself- I remember being in the chat for this as well. I think Yon had about 15 thousand viewers on his attempt where he won. Oh, this is the attempt where he lost, but on the attempt where he won, he, it was insane. It was a massive event. It got posted on Reddit. It got to like the front page of Reddit. It was huge. It, it went way outside the Pokemon community. And for something to go outside of the Pokemon community, that does not happen very often. I, I should know. All the way to the Elite Four in a prior run and had lost. Didn't even get to the champion. Oh, man. So the stakes felt so high in this successful attempt. Yep, there it is. We Run off you. Oh, dude. Just gonna be honest. Must be must feel better than coming. Better than sex. Better than maybe better than heroin. I wouldn't know. I've never tried that. Oh, it was honestly one of the coolest things I've watched on Twitch. And if you haven't seen it, Yon made an incredible video detailing his entire Emerald Kaizo run, which I recommend watching. Around the same really time, good video. John 97 was trying to make his way through Emerald Kaizo, DRXX was attempting a hardcore Nuzlocke of a game called Renegade Platinum. As is the trend with Nuzlocke's though, he had made it a little bit harder on himself. In this playthrough, what is going if on? any Pokemon fainted at any point, DRXX would have to reset. What? If he lost any mons at all? All right, I did a hardcore Nuzlocke of Renegade Platinum and I beat it on the first run and I felt really good about that, but I probably lost about 45 Pokemon. That's insane. This is called just over level. You can't, there's level caps. Deathless Nuzlocke and paired with something he called Hardcore Plus, history was about to be made. Really quick. Bro, oh, that's a Patara fusion that you never want to see. Is just another variant. In this case, it's basic hardcore mode, plus no EVs, no stat boosting moves, and additional level caps for non-boss fights. Oh, dude, come on, man. Okay, there, there's a point that we arrive at where it's just masochism. It's just 50 shades of gray. It's just tie me to a pole and whip me. That's the video game equivalent of what you're doing here. As long as I'm being honest about that, that's totally fine. It's okay. Later, people would also remove pseudo-legendaries, weather, and more. Nuzlockers really like challenging themselves. The deathless hardcore Nuzlocke wasn't the only thing that Drew would popularize, though. Oh, 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 oh. Some of the strategies he used in his original Hardcore Plus Ren Plat run would go on to define the Nuzlocking meta. This includes using repels to manipulate encounters in certain areas and going into battle with a Pokemon who's already asleep. The repel strategy works because some Pokemon in the wild can only be found at specific levels. When you use a repel, you prevent yourself from encountering Pokemon that are a lower level than the lead Pokemon in your party, so this basically can be used to raise the odds on specific encounters in certain areas. Going into battle with a Pokemon who's already asleep allows you to not only avoid getting status, but it also lets you hold a different item than you would otherwise to prevent yourself from being affected by status. The only catch is you have to use the move Sleep Talk to make sure that your Pokemon can actually still attack. More importantly though, Drew was one of the first people to level up his Pokemon using rare candies that were hacked into the game. This allowed- Finally! God, it's about time we got those rare candinos in there! ...to avoid hours of grinding, but was considered controversial at the time that he was doing it. The basic- Yeah, I can't believe people used to yell at me for doing this stuff. I never saw the issue with it. I never understood why people would yell at me. I didn't tell anyone because people would yell at me all the time. I'm like, dude, all it stops is the boring parts the time wasting parts, people will be like, oh, well, actually, grinding is part of a Nuzlocke and you should put it in. I'm like, all it is is time consumption. That's all it is. I would prefer to use my time on things that truly matter to me, like watching anime or anime. Got a lot of One Piece. I had a lot of One Piece to catch up on, okay? There was a thousand as far episodes. As I understand is that rare candies are just grinding, but with a time save, so it actually makes the game both more fun for the player and more fun for the viewer. Whereas people who argue against rare candies argue basically against the fact that. 
you can make mistakes and I don't know, it's considered cheating by some. Now, what I never would actually count a death that happened off screen during grinding because imagine this scenario, okay? Okay, bye, bye, up guys. See you in the next episode. Hi, guys. Welcome to the next episode. I lost during grinding. That's the end of the series. Bye. See you so long. See you later. Bye. So, hope, hope you enjoyed the series. Wouldn't that be anticlimactic? Wouldn't that be boring? If I came back and I was like, ooh, I was grinding and I accidentally lost half my team. Guess the series is over. So long. Is, hacking and rare candies. That's is why I use rare candies. And almost everybody who attempts these difficult nuzlocks with a lot of resets does it. Long story short, grinding is cringe and cheating is based. True. Is good. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Thank you, Alpha. Including Ludwig. In his famous oh, mobile platinum okay. Ludlock, Ludwig showcased one of the most famous examples of a Nuzlocke gone wrong. In a Ludlock, basic hardcore Nuzlocke rules apply, except every Pokemon has to be named after a viewer. And if that Pokemon dies, the viewer gets banned from chat. This is an example of something only Ludwig could do because most Pokemon streamers, if they attempted this, they just wouldn't have a community anymore. Ludwig would. <laughs> Ludwig has, you know, over 10,000, 20,000 viewers in his stream. No one else can do this. Four viewers after he beat the game, but sometimes this- Can we play this? No, we can't play this. I don't have enough viewers to play this. If I ban the people in the chat, then I'll have no viewers quite left. Quite a while. Now, Ludwig had already completed this challenge in a number of other Pokemon games, but only in their base versions. This would be his first ROM hack. Better yet, it would be a ROM hack made specifically for him. Mogul Platinum is an edited version of Renegade Platinum made to be just slightly easier because Ludwig had never attempted a game of this difficulty before. Just for fun, he also had himself inserted into the game as the main character and some of his friends along the way as trainers that he would fight, including me. And so began his first attempt at the Mogul Platinum. He lost to his second rival fight. <laughs> I was gonna say, this was such a big thing because this was during his subathon which was one of the most viewed live stream events of all time. And people still talk about it to this day, the Ludwig subathon that paved the way for subathons in the future. He did this for so much of that subathon while using a level one Elekid. And so began his second attempt at a Mogul Platinum. Uh oh, realizing uh -oh. this was gonna take a while, Ludwig had to learn how to tackle the parts he'd already been How many runs did he do? Like more 12? By his 10th attempt, he quashed his reckless ten. play style and made it all the way he to did the ten final attempts. rival fight before the Elite Four. Whoops. All right, so he lost four of his best Pokemon. Oof. Not too great, Ooh. but he can still- We're still in it. Little did he know, yeah. Ludwig was about to find himself among the list of gaming's most tragic misplays. Besides the opponent's Metagross, Ludwig didn't really have anything that could guarantee a deathless victory. With no clear win condition in front of him, he decided to phone in a friend. Who better than the Deathless Renegade Platinum Nuzlocker himself, DRXX? DRXX. Yeah. The mod gave Drew all the documentation he needed to devise a strategy and save the Ludlock. Coming up to the That's hour so much pressure. Imagine one of the biggest streamers on Twitch, now YouTube, but Twitch at the time, hitting you up and being like, listen, I'm in a bad spot and I need your expertise. Can you help me? The pressure on that is huge because if they don't win, that's your fault. If they misplay, that's still kind of your fault. <laughs> Between battles, Drew found the solution. A seven turn play that needed to be executed in orderly fashion. <laughs> he made a PowerPoint presentation. That's brilliant. With no incoming crits. The plan was simple. Lead with Focus Sash Electivire, use Captivate to lower Espeon special. Boys, today, the plan is simple. Boys, today, the plan is simple. What we're gonna do, take on the Renegade Platinum Elite Four and Champion. We have a PowerPoint presentation Tell us how to win. So there should be no issues. We're gonna take it on, we're gonna beat the champion, and then we'll finally defeat this Nuzlocke. Anyway, that's my uh, audition to be Ludwig. She'll attack, switch to Metagross and use Light Screen, then go to Sceptile. Use Substitute, Swords Dance, and Sweep. Did it Easy. play out that way? Yes. Uh, not, not so much, no. Nope. Just for fun, let's watch how it went down from Drew's perspective. Keep in mind, this is a play he was asked to make. All right. Step one, use Captivate. Captivate when the Pokemon you are fighting is the opposite gender, sharply lower special attack. Let's go! Let's go! He's popping off that he clicked one button. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yes. Good. So this good. Is, although super I popularized the Fantina Captivate strat. Shred. It's prepared me for this moment, boys. Nice. Then okay. I can switch out. Dude, you can even switch go for out. another one. Who's adept at taking psychic type moves, being psychic type 
himself. Wait, did he not go for another yeah. one? Yeah. Then you light screen. Uh, here we go. We're doing it. He's doing it. Just, wait, did he did he not do the second one that he's supposed to do? I use light, light screen. screen. Heck yeah. A move which increases. Yeah. Reflect. That's fine. That's fine. My defense against special oh, you won't only chat. You can't talk. Anyways, then that's fine. I into and then you go back and you sub and you set up, baby. S beyond minus two special attack and a light screen. Yes. Up, I should be able to tank almost any. Yes. Now, nice, nice, mind. nice. Here we go. That's fine. That's fine. okay. Good. Last turn. Yeah. So Reflect cat the reflect last turns. Last Count them up. Turns. Count them up. Yeah. Let's use okay. one sword stance here. No, 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 no. sub, 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 sub first. You sub first. Sub uh -oh. first. So Don't risk crit. Uh -oh. Substitute first. Reflect. Dude, you oh, no. sub first. Don't risk crit. Oh no. Oh no. Sub first. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no! 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 Oh, oh god. No! That's Ouch. devastating. Hundreds of subscribers banned, thousands of dollars lost. This challenge was starting to poke its head into the real world. It needed to end, but it would go on and on and on until finally on his 16th run, Ludwig would make it to the 16? Elite Four once again at the cost of almost his entire team. Out of encounters, he only had the Pokemon left in his box to build a suitable team. What? Wingle, Masquerain, Chimeco, Beautifly, Love Disc, Gorobis, Kingla? No, 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 no. The final product not. was unconventional. Oh my god, what is this? Tentacruel, Whiskash, Spirit Seam, Stommy, Wormadam, and Love Disc. Say the least. Tentacruel, Whiskash, Spirit Seam, Starmy, Burmy, and Love Disc. The first three Elite Four members went down relatively easily, but would he be able to beat the final Elite Four member? The one Nick. who had crushed his dreams those runs ago? And would he still have enough Pokemon left to then beat Cynthia, the champion of champions? The answer to those questions lies in one Pokemon in particular, Whiskash. A Whiskash that needed to get off six Dragon Dances. Face to face with Six? the Espeon that ended that really his necessary? run, Ludwig knew what he had to do. Captivate. Switch. Sub first. Substitute. <laughs> Dragon Dance. <laughs> he heard a whisper from beyond the realms. Sub first. Ludwig, you need to sub first. Ludwig, use the force, Ludwig. Sweet. And that's all there was to it. Lud had made it to the champion, but could he do it again? Yep, Whiskash did its dance, raised its speed to plus six, and swept through Cynthia's entire team before they got a chance to move. Finally, after 16 attempts in three and a half months, Ludwig finally did it, and he unbanned over 230 people that had gotten Let's banned go! along the way. As you can tell, sometimes all it takes is one good strategy. The hard part is finding that strategy. Even though Mogul Platinum is an edited version of Renegade Platinum, they didn't share the same solution. Of course, there's not just one way to beat every game. What you're seeing here is the guide for Pokemon Dark Rising 2. Oh I no, not that one. Oh God, I beat that one as well. Dude, this game is a nightmare. I beat it as a normal Nuzlocke, but Jesus Guide, Christ. I mean, it's just a list of the game's boss fights and their Pokemon. It's up to you to figure out how to beat them. And yes, this is the sequel to the game that didn't have a completed hardcore Nuzlocke for over nine years. Speaking of which, it's about time that somebody finally beat it. The year is 2022. A streamer named Burrito is on their eighth attempt of the hardcore Dark Rising Nuzlocke. Having I only did an original Nuzlocke. Also, I did private the, uh, I did pop, I did unlist those videos. So obviously that wouldn't be uh, found in this for this video, uh, but I did only do a normal Nuzlocke. So I played this for quite some Just time. Wait. Burrito is starting to notice, hey, this game might actually be broken. Aside from the derpy sprites, swapped cries, and abilities that switch when you change your Pokemon's nickname, it seems like the creator didn't know about the physical special split. Not only that, but some <laughs> moves were just missing their secondary effects. Roost, for example, didn't get rid of your flying type. Burrito also had a rough time discerning when the AI was smart and when it was random, both of which you need to play around in different ways. But over the course of three months, Burrito would do what no one else could. 
But what if I told did you it. this wasn't Burrito's only first? Just a year earlier, he was the first person to successfully complete a hardcore Nuzlocke of a very Radical popular Reds. Pokemon ROM hack called Pokemon Radical Red. What makes this- God, this game is hard, but also I've done it as well. I mean, it's been updated, so it's way different now, but this still, it's so cool. special is that it's always evolving. Rather than make sequels that add new Pokemon moves and features, Radical Red gets updated on a consistent basis, making it more like a live service game without the microtransactions. Some of the yes, the only good live service game. EA, Ubisoft, take notice, please. Those include character customization, level scaling, and even a hardcore mode made specifically for Nuzlockers. Because of this, every time a new update comes out, the community flocks to see who can beat it first. Burrito was the first to beat version 2.3. Version 3.1, the okay. latest version as of the time I'm making this video, has yet that one. to be beaten. Let's what? talk about version 3.0. Oh, oh, okay. That, that's Released fine. on July 9th of 2020. Wait, no, that's just been beaten, right? Been beaten. 22. Only two and a half weeks after its release, a streamer named Three Plates would be the first to beat it, Deathless. A little over two weeks later, another streamer named Dexa would beat it as well. It means hardcore mode. Oh, hardcore mode. That's right. I played um, I played normal mode. I didn't play hardcore mode. That's right. No, no, no. That's right. Hardcore mode is not fun. Hardcore mode sucks. Don't play hardcore mode. Sucks. The reason they were able to beat it so quickly and in a hardcore deathless mode to boot is because they'd spent so much time playing previous versions. Yes, there were new Pokemon and mechanics, but these players knew the game so well that they were easily able to play around the new changes. Using their strats, others were also able to beat version 3.0 soon after. Today, you can find dozens of creators streaming their Nuzlocke's no matter what time of day or night you try to watch. And because new Pokemon games and fan games are always coming out, the Nuzlocke community is always evolving. What I think is really cool about Nuzlocking is the fact that it brings people together so much. Nuzlocking started as a webcomic, but it was a webcomic that people really related to. They really understood, they really felt like they were a part of the journey. Nuzlocking has changed a lot since its inception. There's I'm obviously cry. major differences between one this guy creating a- Can I just say, this video is so well done. This video is absolutely spectacular. God, Wolfie puts out some of the best videos on the platform, at least in terms of Pokemon content. The research, the editing, the- narration even if it was just a lot, a lot of it was showing people's experiences and their nuzlocks but it was told in a way that makes you feel like you were really there and this is so good so well done man Wolfie's amazing video at this. game compared to you know a masterfully created animation with over 80 million views compared to the best nuzlocker in the world taking on the hardest nuzlocke live in front of 10,000 people but what i think is neat about all three of these is that there's this shared sense of community Pokemon is notoriously a single player game, but Nuzlocke's bring people together. Whether to celebrate the highs and commiserate the lows, or whether to work together to beat one of the hardest games ever created, Nuzlocking brings people together. I, just, I was just watching Wolfie and Ludwig doing the chair sit back when they lose. I think I did the same thing when I lost my Radical Red run that was at the champion. You just, the, the signature like, the signature chair sit back and, and like saggy head is like, that's the feeling that everyone gets. It's like being hit by a critical hit. And that's what I think is really special about it. So no matter the game, no matter if it's the first casual run or a hardcore deathless Nuzlocke, I'm confident that Nuzlocke's will be here to stay for a while. Oh yeah, yes they will, because I'm not gonna stop anytime soon because I like doing them. Wolfie, this was an absolutely fantastic video. I... I'm so happy that something like this was made, and I'm really, I, I feel i feel great that I was included in that. I, I really appreciate the fact that, you know, there, there was a lot of the Pokemon can eat included in that. Because I feel like the Pokemon community is quite small and insular, and to have a video of such a, such caliber made about the stuff that I kind of grew, I not, not grew up on. Some of my most formative years were spent on YouTube making these types of videos and have it laid out in such a, such a succinct manner is really cool to see. And it means, it means a lot to me personally. And I think that it was a fantastic video. So subscribe to Wolfie, he's almost a million subscribers. And if you enjoyed the reaction, then you can subscribe to my channel as well.